Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on the Divine Messages podcast. My name is Karina, and I am a psychic medium out of Calgary, Alberta. Today, I wanted to do a full episode on anxiety. Not only have I worked with so many people recently that have been struggling through anxiety, but I have suffered through it myself in my past, so much so to the point that it was absolutely debilitating. I experienced panic attacks, depression, fear, and more. So if anyone understands anxiety, I sure do. I never went to any doctor for it or took any sort of meds. And I mean, I didn't really do that purposefully. I was just so far in that I couldn't recognize that I needed help. I suffered alone and behind closed doors. No one, not even my husband, knew how bad it was. And I lived in fight-or-flight mode for so many years that I believe that I had just gotten so used to living that way that I really didn't know how to live any differently. I constantly walked on eggshells around everyone. I was always waiting for the next thing to go wrong. I avoided a lot in life. I said no to friends wanting to go out. I didn't want to do anything that involved a potential stressful situation. And it wasn't always a stressful situation that would cause an anxiety or panic attack. Sometimes they just seemed to come out of nowhere. Every time I felt anxiety creeping in, I would panic. I hated the feeling that would come over me. It would start in my stomach. I would feel queasy, unsettled, and really just off. It would then start to rise up through my chest and all the way up until my throat. I would literally feel my chest tightening to the point of feeling that I couldn't breathe. And sometimes I would also get the shakes and I would feel as if the walls would be closing in all around me. I would be so on edge that even the slightest noise would make me jump out of my skin. The anxiety was horrible, but the panic attacks were even worse. During a panic attack, you actually feel as if you are having an out-of-body experience. It feels as if the world is closing in on you and you are suffocating. So many people sadly struggle with this, and I was one of them. And notice how I say that I was one of them? It used to be a part of my daily life. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I never have a panic attack or anxiety. I'm just saying that it now only happens on a very, very rare occasion. And not as it once was either. I've learned how to stop everything in its tracks and deal with it head on. The amount of people that I work with that suffer from anxiety, depression, and panic attacks is unreal. And the sad part is that most of them suffered alone behind that closed door as I once had. I think some people are really afraid to admit that they aren't okay. And not only are they afraid to admit it to others, I think they are more afraid to admit it to themselves. To someone who struggles with anxiety, the fear of being anxious can become overwhelming. It's as if the fear of being afraid is something that can trigger the fight or flight mode, which then becomes difficult to come back down from. People who suffer from anxiety get stuck in the irrational, panicky thoughts, and that fear can escalate and create an almost obsession of worst-case scenarios. The mind gets so caught up with holding on to that fear that it makes it extremely difficult to let the fear go and fall back into a normal, natural rhythm. Instead, anxiety tells us that we must remain on guard. So now I want to try to help today with sharing all of the tools and techniques that help me to remain calm and out of fight or flight mode. Let's go through a list of things that you can do to catch anxiety and heal it before it escalates. Number one, bring your soul back into your body. Before anxiety takes over, try to catch it as it's coming in. When we are anxious, our souls disconnect from our physical bodies and we start to float in the other realm because that's where it feels safe but we are meant to be present in our bodies. So stop whatever you are doing, sit or lie down, and start to feel all of the sensations in your body. Is your heart racing? Is your stomach sick? Start focusing on your breath. Try the seven by seven by seven rule. Breathe slowly in for seven full seconds, then hold your breath for seven seconds, then finally release and exhale your breath for another seven seconds. This simple technique will slow your heart rate down to its natural state. It also helps to bring your soul back into your body and be present. Repeat this breathing until your thoughts are calm. If anxiety tries to creep in again, focus on breathing until the fear subsides. It takes a little bit of practice until you may be able to bring your body into that natural state of releasing the fears, but just try to repeat it as many times as you can and slowly your body will get used to the calm. Number two. Ground your energy. 
So if you can, walk barefoot outside or place your feet to the ground indoors and imagine that millions of little tiny tree roots are growing out of the bottom of your feet. This brings your soul back into your physical body. And that means you can even lay down on the floor or grass outside to connect with the earth. Number three, cancel, clear, and delete the fear response. You can retrain your body to clear the fear response by physically dealing with the body's sensations one at a time. So sit with those sensations. Are you starting to feel as if you can't breathe? Recognize that the fear and anxiety is starting to creep into your chest. Then go find a quiet spot and focus on your breathing. So when we're anxious, we have a tendency to hold our breath, but catching the fear response right in its tracks will help it to not escalate. So are you feeling sick to your stomach? Are you getting queasy? You can also go grab a really cold cloth and place it to your face. The feeling of the cool sensation can help to focus on that feeling instead of the stomach. The key point is to be aware of those negative sensations and do something that will physically change them into a completely different sensation. Number four, move your body. Sometimes anxiety can paralyze us to the point that we cannot move from what we may feel is a comfort spot. So get up, go for a walk, go for a run. Really, any form of exercise will help to shift the energy. The more that you sit still, the more the anxiety will try to take over. Going for a walk for me calms me right down. I find that it helps me to get rid of my anxious thoughts before they get out of control. Number five, cut back on caffeine. Caffeine causes a spike in our adrenaline levels, and this can increase anxiety. And I love, love, love my coffee. But if I'm having a few anxious days, I will cut back, if not cut out my coffee intake. I know my body, and I know when I'm starting to feel anxious. And if I have that coffee, I know that I could potentially put myself into a downward spiral. Be mindful of chocolate as well. It's almost like an instant gratification to eat it, but it can also spike those levels and be difficult to bring yourself back down without effort. Number six, watch a funny movie or TV show. You would be surprised at how much a lighthearted episode can change your entire mood. And it's important though to actually focus on what you are watching. I've sat in front of the TV while having severe anxiety and it's as if nothing was on. I would be floating away in my anxious thoughts that I wasn't present at all. But when I forced myself to pay attention, it changed everything. Number seven, take a freezing cold shower. Yes, this one is extreme and rather unpleasant, but if you are in the middle of an extreme anxiety attack, this will snap you back to reality. It will trick your body into thinking you are swimming and that will slow your heart rate down and you will naturally become more calm. If this method is too extreme for you, just fill a bucket with ice cold water and place your hands and feet in it to calm down. It really does work. Number eight, journal your thoughts. Sometimes it's important when we feel no one understands what we are going through. It can help us to get the thoughts and feelings off of our chests. It's a way to release our fears, stress, and worry so that they don't fester in our bodies. Number nine, mantras. Reciting positive affirmations can help to shift the nervous energy. Try any of these. This too shall pass. I am safe and at peace. I am in control of my thoughts and energy. It helps to raise your vibration and calm the body, mind, and soul. Recite them over and over until your thoughts calm down and bring you back to that beautiful natural state. Number 10, talk to someone that you trust about your anxiety. I kept to myself about my struggles for two reasons. One was that I didn't want to burden anyone with my problems. And two, I was afraid that they would think less of me. And yes, that's crazy when you really think about it because I would never turn away a friend or family member if they reached out for help. Heck, even a stranger for that matter. And yet, I was too fearful to reach out myself. But I believe there will always be someone out there that would be more than willing to listen and help. It is not weak to ask for help. It is the strongest thing that you could ever possibly do. Number 11, seek out a counselor. I am all for therapy. A professional can give you the tools to overcome and manage anxiety. We all need a little bit of help sometimes and working with a counselor can be extremely helpful. There is absolutely nothing wrong with reaching out and getting help from someone who specializes in anxiety. Number 12, 
The last and best thing that I can suggest for helping with anxiety is to place one hand onto your chest and the other one on your stomach. Then close your eyes and slowly focus on your breath. Then imagine that there is the most beautiful golden light, just like the sunshine, beaming down over your head. Imagine that beautiful calm healing light is going through your crown chakra, so that's the top of your head, and it's traveling down through your arms and out your palms, filling your entire body with light. And as you breathe in slowly, imagine your whole body and soul being washed of any fears or anxious thoughts. As you breathe out, imagine every ounce of negativity falling away from you. Now keep breathing until you feel a calmness come over you. This is the one exercise that I consider my go-to because it can shift my energy so fast to calm, especially when I don't have a lot of time. So try this if you ever feel anxious or unsettled. So I want to leave you all with this today. It is okay to not be okay. Anxiety is nothing to be ashamed of. There will always be ups and downs in life, and we must all learn to swim with every wave that we encounter. It is perfectly okay to reach out and seek help. You are not alone. Many, many people are struggling, and it's important to talk about it. As a healer, I've been sent so many clients that have also struggled behind closed doors until they finally took a chance to come for a healing session. And these tips are what I like to teach them so that they can learn to heal themselves. That's why you go to a healer. Not for them to heal you, but for them to ignite the healing within yourself. So I want to thank you all so much for joining me today on the Divine Messages podcast, and I hope that if you are struggling with anxiety, that you will find the strength to seek the help that you need. If you would like to book a reading with me, I can be reached at www.divinemessages.ca or on Instagram at divinemessages333 or at the Divine Messages podcast, as well as on Facebook under Divine Messages or the Divine Messages podcast. Please bear in mind that the perspectives and opinions represented in this podcast are based solely on the Divine Messages interpretations. We can in no way be held responsible for the actions of our followers.